In this video, I will explain the different healthcare job roles you may come across in this job. And that is living carer, senior carer, support worker, and care assistant. Their salaries, their working hours, and the pros and cons. So stick around and let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to your taste lifestyle by Chinemerem. If it is your first time on my channel, hello, my name is Chinemerem and you are most welcome. And to my returning subscribers, the most amazing returning subscribers, thank you all so very much. I really appreciate your love, your share, your coming back. It means so much to me. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Like this video, share this video and thank you very much. So I got a request to explain more about living carers, what they do, their working hours and everything. And I thought to myself, oh, why not make a very comprehensive video about all the roles you will come across in this care assistant job? Perhaps there is someone out there who wants to know more about all of them. And this may also help you when you are applying so you know what you are going in for. Take this as me talking to you from experience and from what i've researched all right so it's more like my experience blended with research to bring this video to you so don't take this as a professional or don't take this as a recruiter talking to you about what they need from you so that being said let's get right into this video who is a healthcare assistant a healthcare assistant is a non-qualified nursing staff who assist in patient care and other duties that are related under the supervision of a qualified healthcare professional. So as a healthcare assistant, you may work in a care home, a residential home, a supported living home, or even in a hospital. So like you already know, you may work as a living carer, a care assistant, a support worker, or a senior carer. So let me now explain all these roles to you in plain terms, the working hours and everything you need to know. Number one is living carer. So you may hear living carer or living care assistant. They mean the same thing. As a living carer, you are still a healthcare assistant, right? But you live in the patient's home. So that's just it. And that means you have to be there 24 seven. You eat there, you sleep over there. In some cases, you may be allowed to cook there. In some cases, you may have to buy your food out there, but it all depends on where you are working. But as a living carer, you live with your patient 24 seven. So I won't say now that as a living carer, these are the duties you will do. No, like there is no specific duty. Although there are some basic ones that are specific for living carers. For instance, for personal care is one of the basic ones you will see like a basic specific role for living carers. But any other things like, um changing catheter, you know, changing nappy and all that would vary. What your duties will be will depend fully on who you are taking care of. So you have to listen to your patient's needs. While you get on the job, you will still keep learning. So as a living carer, already you know you are to work 24-7. But working 24-7 does not mean you'll be actively working. It doesn't mean you have to be doing something. It doesn't mean you have to be doing one thing or the other. It only means that when you are in the person's home, you are working. Now, you could be there sitting down, but it is assumed you are working and you still get paid. But you will have to work when you have to work and you also rest when you have to rest. In most cases, you'll be allowed an hour or two hours break. So it depends on your employer and your contract. All these things will be listed on your contract. So how long they give you for your break or how long you are allowed to take your breaks will always depend. I'm telling you what is kind of um, obtainable. So when you get your contract, you can now look through and see, okay, this is what my contract says. I can. So please kindly cross check with your contract. You are not expected to live in the patient's house for every single day in 365 days. So depending on your contract or your agreement with your employer, you may do one week in, one week out, two weeks in, two weeks out, or even three months in, three months out. What this means is you may live in the person's house for one week and the other one week you are elsewhere, maybe in your house or anything. You may also do two weeks in, like maybe you're living with the person for this next for these two weeks, and then the next two weeks you go home or anywhere. You may also say, okay, I will live three months in this person's house and then one week out and then come back after one week. It depends absolutely on what you've agreed with your employer or what the employer wants from you. If the person's needs are more complex, then you are likely to be paid more. So how much you get paid depends on, first of all, the employer, your contract, and the need of the person you are taking care of. Most living care jobs pay weekly 
monthly or daily you may get up to 500 pounds a week you may get more you may get less but most times you could get about 500 pounds a week that means at the end of the month you're getting about 2000 pounds that's good that's okay like any other job living care jobs has its own challenges so you must stay away from your home from your family you know it can be challenging right? you don't you basically don't have a life of your own your life revolves around the person you're taking care of you obviously have your time to sleep but there are good things about living care jobs as well because you're saving money for your rent for your bills and all that you could develop a real good friendship with the person you're taking care of and you know you make friends as well and you could learn from them because job is better it sits single people more than for married people most times single parents can do this job and if you are married as well you may not be you may not be that flexible taking up this job and that's that about living carers i hope i did justice to this let me know in the comment section if yes and if not please also let me know and bring on your questions if you have more questions as well please bring them on and if i know i'll answer if not i will check and give you a reply as soon as i can the next one is care assistant so sometimes you may hear carer or care assistant again they mean the same thing they are pretty much the same as a carer you could work in a nursing home a residential home a mental health home or in a hospital it actually depends most times care assistant is more related to elderly care and your duties include helping them with personal care cleaning their space so they, you are sure they are living in a in a good and healthy environment with good hygiene feeding them, shopping for them, gisting them, playing with them, spending your time with them. And you know, every activity you feel someone should need in life, you would actually do all of this with them. With care assistants, you are you tend to more, maybe change more of paths and um, catheters, you know, things like this. These are more of what care assistants do. As a carer, you are not expected to work alone in most cases you don't work alone most times work in a building in a building like a home where there are many residents they could be first floor second floor third floor it actually depends on the home on how it or how it is but in most cases you wouldn't work with only one patient you would work with so many patients so in a day you may be assigned to work with three or four patients with other people as well as a care assistant you would normally work under supervision of a senior carer or a nurse in most care homes as a full-time staff you could work for 37.5 hours a week or 20 hours a, a week if you are a part-time staff how you take your breaks depends on whether you are working a full day shift or a half day shift depending on the job a full day shift may be from 8 a.m to 8 p.m or from 7 a.m to 7 p.m and a half day shift may be from 8 a.m to 2 p.m or 8 a.m to 3 p.m or even 4 p.m so your job will tell you what a half day shift is and a full day shift is in some care homes if you're working a half day shift you are only allowed to take a 30 minute break and if you are working a long day shift you will be allowed to take an hour break depending on your, where you are working you can also ask if you're taking an hour break how long is it the whole hour at once or is it 30 30 minutes most care assistants are paid hourly so in most jobs they could deduct one hour from your pay if you're taking an hour break they will deduct one hour from your pay so in a day if you're working eight hours you will get paid for seven hours 30 minutes and if you're doing a long day shift that's for 12 hours you will get paid for only 11 hours and you could get anything from eight pounds to 12 pounds as a care assistant so the good thing about care assistants is that you don't work on your own you work with people and you also work under nursing supervisions as a care assistant it is more flexible for you like you are not living tied down to say to a particular place to a particular job okay you can work and go home and also have a life of your own to live it's also more suitable for a family person or, or a single mom or dad to brace up for the challenges the third one is senior care assistant again you may also hear senior carer or senior care assistant they mean the same thing and in some places you may be called a team leader as a senior carer you are in charge of the shift so in most cases you are the person that the care assistants will report to and then you can now go directly to the nurse the doctor or whoever that is in charge to report what the care assistants have reported to you your job includes assigning duties to care assistants like i said that care assistants may get assigned to 
take care of one or two persons. It is your duty as a senior carer. You also plan the activities for the day. Say Mr. A has to go to the shop, you have to plan it. Say Mrs. B has to go to the clinic, you have to plan it. So basically, you organize the day-to-day -day activities. You are also in charge of handovers. If you are trained, you may also administer medications to residents or to patients. And sometimes you may have to cover extra shifts, like say someone calls in sick or anything and nobody to cover the shift, you may be asked to cover the shift. So senior care assistants earn roughly around 12 pounds per hour and it could go more than that. It could be less, it could be more. So that's it about senior care assistants. Then the last one is support worker. To me, I feel this is the easiest of them all, but not always, but this is just the easiest role in this care assistant job role. So even though support worker is quite similar to care assistant, it can be a bit different. So as a support worker, your main role is to help people who have or may not have the capacity to live a quality life. A care assistant would have to do all these things for them, but a support worker will only support them to do these things by themselves. So that's the difference. A care assistant will have to do these duties for the people they are taking care of, but a support worker would have to support them to do these things themselves. So you may work in a residential home, a supported living home, or in a patient's home. You could also work with people with learning disabilities, mental health needs, and you know, stuff like that. You may or may not always be involved in their personal care, but you would always ensure that they are keeping a good hygiene. You could help them to cook, to clean. In most cases, you don't have to do this, but in maybe coming and their house is not as neat as it should be, you could always help them to, you know, clean their house and then put things in order. If they love football, you could support them to go to the stadium to watch football. And luckily, if you love football as well, you may get a free ticket to go and watch this football with them. So most times to get to go watch a live football match, right? You have to pay. But if you are supporting someone to go to the stadium to watch this football, you will you may likely get a free ticket to go watch football with them. You could also take them to other fun places and you know you have fun as well. So not just about them having fun, you are also having fun taking care of people. You may also administer medication to them as a support worker, but you'll be trained to do this. Or you may not, they may be able to do it themselves. Well, similar to the care assistant one, you could work for 37.5 hours a week if you're working full time or 20 hours a week if you are working part time. Whether you get breaks or not depends on where you are working. Most times you don't take breaks as a support worker. So long as there is no job to be done at the point, you know, ask them for permission and you go and eat and you could also rest when they are resting. If the job is a bit complex, then you may be given one hour or 30 minute break, depending. You could earn anything from eight pounds and above hourly. Support workers are also paid hourly. So as a support worker, all you do is just to help people, to support them to do things they need to do for themselves. Pay and everything will always depend on your contract, on what your agreement with your employer is and who your employer is. I hope you understood everything I've just said. So let me know in the comment section. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you found it very useful. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video. Until I see you in my next video, you take care, stay safe and bye.